Well, welcome to another episode of Headline Show with Craig Gabriel. And with me is Richard Evans, one of the doyens of world tennis. How many books have you written in your time on tennis? On tennis? Well, about 15, something like that. But a few on uh, rugby, cricket, football, soccer, that is, for any American listener. Now, the person we're going to be talking about today is Andy Murray. You haven't done something on Murray yet, book-wise, and I don't think there have been too many books around about him, have there? Well, there were a couple of years ago, um, and there will be in future, Sir Andy, um, because he's not finished, no matter uh, what uh, wobbles are going on at the moment. He is very determined to add to his uh, gathering uh, mountain of titles, um, and I think it's, it's interesting um, that even you and I, who are pretty close to the action, still have no idea what it takes out of someone to achieve what Andy achieved for the last six months of 2016, when he barely lost a match um, from the moment he, he won Rome. In fact, he'd been in the final of Madrid before. It goes all the way back to um, April, May, and then finishing up at the O2 in London, winning the ATP finals. And that really takes a toll because it's not just the winning, it's, it's the travel. I mean, you've been all over the Far East. You know what it's like to go from Shanghai to Beijing to uh, Tokyo. It, you, you and know, Timbuktu. And Timbuktu on your day off. That's supposed to be your day off, but it's not a day off. And so he was exhausted. Then he got shingles, um, which is not fun, and it leaves its mark, um, literally and uh, probably psychologically a little bit. So he's been through a little bit of a tough run so far this year. But knowing Andy Murray as I do, I think uh, he will come out of it. Richard, you, you, you mentioned one word when you spoke initially of Andy Murray, Sir Andy Murray. <laughs> He got knighted on the Queen's New Year's Honours list. I mean, a well-deserved honour, obviously, for all he's achieved for British sport, not just British tennis. But it's so um, unusual for somebody who's still an active sportsman, athlete, to be knighted. Yes, it is. And I think he probably felt it was too soon. Um, I think he may even be a little bit embarrassed by it. Uh, because he, he's not one of those guys who goes shouting from the rooftops, look how great I am. That's not Andy Murray. And, um, but the, the problem was the precedents have been set. Um, other athletes in other sports um, have been knighted while they're still active. And the fact is that there was no getting away from the fact that Andy Murray is Britain's premier sportsman. I mean, with all the greatest of respect to all the other medal winner, winners in Rio, most of them disappeared on holiday. Andy Murray picked up his racket, went to Cincinnati, got to the final, played the US Open, went out to the Far East and kept on going, winning, winning, winning. And uh, that kind of commitment, that kind of strength, physical and mental, uh, makes him Britain's premier athlete. So what were you supposed to do but knight him? Interesting also, I think, is the comparisons that are frequently made between Murray and Britain's previous great, great player, Fred Perry. Do you think he's surpassed Perry as the greatest British tennis player of all time? Oh, without any doubt. Um, I mean, it's so difficult. We've been through this so many times, so difficult to compare generations. I think Fred Perry, who I knew, he was my summarizer at Wimbledon. I sat next to him for three or four years. What a treat that was. What, in the 30s and 40s? In the 30s and 40s. <laughs> um, but when he was playing in the 30s and 40s, um, it was a completely different game. Yeah. Um, he was such a great athlete that he would have been able to raise his game like the Budgies and the Kramers and the Vineses. They would have all risen to the level required of them. But the fact is they did not play tennis uh, at a level anywhere near what is played today. Uh, not even near what was played 20 years ago. And Andy Murray is competing in an era that has seen three of the greatest players yes. of all time, Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic, three of the greatest of all time, and that has been his opposition. And despite that, he's won three Grand Slams, been in how many Australian Open finals? Yeah. Uh, French final. French final, the only person to defend a gold at the Olympics in singles and won a whole host of ATP 1000 titles. So, I mean, all that is an amazing achievement in itself. 
and one wonders what on earth would have happened if you'd taken away just two of the other three mm -hmm. top four. How many titles would he have won then? So, yeah, Andy Murray is uh, the greatest tennis player Britain's ever had. You know, it's interesting you, you're saying about the, the, uh, um, the fact that he would have been embarrassed on being knighted and all that sort of stuff. I, I put a tweet out a few, a, couple of, a few days ago and said, is Andy Murray the most humble and the most no airs and graces among the biggest names of active tennis players? And, and the response that I got was overwhelmingly yes, that he is just such a down-to-earth player, a person. And, and the fact that I also feel um, he's got a great sense of humor. He's a funny guy. And he, he actually cracks himself up at times in press conferences. Yeah, but it's terribly dry and terribly Scottish. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's why people don't get it. Um, and he does have a great sense of humor, and he is humble. There's, there's no question about that. Uh, he doesn't put himself on a pedestal. And, and the thing that is most um, uh, interesting to me is how much he knows about everything exactly. that's going on in his sport. And he follows British players, and he will put on a jacket at the, at the, on a cold night in Melbourne and leave his hotel and go back to watch Dan Evans play a, a late match under the lights. That's how much he supports British tennis and is interested in it. And he, he watches uh, the challengers on some TV channel he finds in South America if there's a British player playing. That is inspiring to the other players. It must be. And uh, I think that's all part of Andy Murray's makeup. No, no doubt about it. Totally agree with you in exactly what you've said because he is that sort of a person. He is a humble person. I think, you know, having a brother who uh, plays the sport at an elite level as well and a mother who's, I think, a pretty strong-willed willed woman has kept him grounded. And I also always remember Ivan Lendl telling me, who's Andy's coach, for those who are not aware, um, saying to me that he was always impressed with how polite Andy Murray is. Yes, I mean, again, it's, it's unfortunate because like many other players, Michael Stieck always comes to mind, mm -hmm. uh, he presents himself badly on court. Mm -hmm. Um, he, he chunters away and, and, and uh, you know, looks fussed and, and angry and all the rest of it. And that is not Andy Murray. That is not the person you and I know. He's completely different. He is very polite. He's, he's well brought up. He's Judy Murray's son. He, he's not going, to be, yeah. not going to be rude to people. And, um, but you, there's a little bit of that with the Rafa Nadal. I mean, all the photographs you see of Nadal on court is this contorted face, rage, uh, and uh, very different to the smiling, relaxed person we meet in press conference or just around tennis because Rafa, again, is two different people, on court, off court. And that is true for a lot of these uh, highly competitive athletes. You wrote a book called Rage to Perfection about Johnny Mack. Uh, um, do you think there's some of that in Andy Murray as well? In an inability to control his competitive urges on court, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, it comes out in a different way. Um, McEnroe used to release it by railing against line calls that he felt and usually was true were, were going against him because he had better eyes than the, than the umpires and line judges in those days before Hawkeye. Um, but yes, there's, there's, a, there's a little bit of that. Um, there's probably more of uh, John McEnroe in Nick Kyrgios. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of comparisons with that kind of temperament, um, rebellious and, and uh, not always in control of their emotions. But um, Andy Murray, uh, you know, he's aware of it. He's aware of how he, he looks yes. on court, and, and he, he does try and do something about it. He moved his team away from courtside. He moved them back. didn't help. Um, <laughs> it, it's something, obviously, that he cannot control. In closing, if you had to sum up Andy Murray as an athlete, as a person, what would you say? Highly competitive, yes. um, very aware, very intelligent. He's, he's a very Ex smart Incredibly cookie. intelligent, isn't he? He's a very smart cookie. You, you can't pull the wool over his eyes. He learns very quickly. He learned from that 
remark about English football years and years ago when he was 18. And um, he's, uh, he's just an all-round good guy. Yeah, and, and do you think it's going to take a little bit of time for him to get over these little bit of this little bit of a slump that he's had in the early part of 2017? He even said after all he put into the game last year, he struggled for a bit of motivation. He's too good a player and too, you know, as you've been saying, smart uh, as a person, as an athlete, to uh, to really wallow in that, and and he'll, it'll all come out, you know, turn around. It'll turn around. Um, I, I think it would take a big setback if he didn't do well at Wimbledon, and by that I mean minimum semi-finals. Mm -hmm. um, if he has an early round loss at Wimbledon, I think that will hit him very hard. Uh, but if he doesn't, if he plays well at Wimbledon and, and gets to the sharp end of the tournament, then I think he'll kick on. Um, he does well on the American hard courts. Um, he's due a good US Open. Uh, he owns Asia whenever he goes out there. And uh, one day, he's going to win the Australian Open. Well, we wait to see and if that ever happens. Hopefully it will for Andy Murray and British tennis. Richard Evans, thanks for joining us on Headlines. Thank you, Craig.